Hi folks, we're back again with a continuation in our video series on Royal Observer Corps equipment. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at the personal dosimeter charger um, and also the dosimeters themselves. Now, in previous videos, we've we've seen Geiger counters, survey meters, things like that there. Um, now, they're good at telling you how much radiation, uh, you know, is, is in the air. Um, but it doesn't tell you how much, unless you do, you know, you start working things out. Uh, it doesn't tell you how much radiation you've been exposed to. So with the observers being underground, um, if they needed to go out above ground to do mobile monitoring, where they would be tasked with going out to find out maybe if there was a, a road that was impassable or if they were close to a motorway, if a, a motorway was impassable, things like that. Um, or if they needed to maybe run the generator or if they needed to do some work on a, uh, you know, just any, for any particular reason, they had to go outside. Um, they needed to know how much radiation that they had been exposed to from being underground and also how much radiation they'd been exposed to when they went above ground. So all the observers would have worn um, a dosimeter. Uh, now the the pen style ones um, were introduced from the you know mid fifties, and this style of dosimeter was used right up until the Gulf War, uh, when they were replaced with a sort of a, a watch style dosimeter. Um, anybody who's ever got an X or anything will will see a dosimeter on uh, on the person doing the X ray in the hospital. Uh, people who work in the nuclear industry will all wear dosimeters um, pinned to their lapels now, with electronic ones. But back in the day, there would have been a peacetime one, a uh, training one, and then obviously one for a nuclear war. So uh, the, the these ones were in, in use for a long time. So inside, you've got a little glass uh, display. Uh, you look through that, hold it up to the light, a light source, a torch, match, anything like that, a candle up to the sun you would get, uh, look inside, there'll be a little display and you would, uh, have, there'd be a little, basically a fibre uh, that was electrically charged inside and the all the, basically the neutrons, the gamma rays or whatever, uh, hitting the, uh, the, the static charge would degrade the static charge and it would uh, basically give you a reading of what it was. So every 24 hours or so, you would have to zero it and that's where then with the dust meter charger came in. So this is a dosimeter charger number one. Um, the dosimeter would, that's your charging there, that's the little center pin there. Simply you would put that in. Then you have a charging handle here. And then at the front you have a mirror. So the mirror would go down, you would put a light source onto the mirror which would reflect up through the charging hole. And then if I turn it on to its side, you would wind the handle to build up the static charge. And then you would turn this rotary dial then to zero the dosimeter itself. And that will have you good to go then to let you build up the charge. Now the early style ones didn't hold their charge for very, very long. Um, they, uh, they also had a tendency when you were charging them to be able to skip so as soon as you stopped charging, you would get the dosimeter to zero, you would stop charging and you would get a little jump and the actual charge would jump up again. So you had to do the process again. So they tried with the later style ones to eliminate that skip. Uh, so as they got more and more advanced, it became a lot easier to charge them. So there's no batteries involved in this. So all via this hand crank dyno and you build it up, build up the, the, uh, the static energy and then you release it into the dosimeter itself. So, uh, as obviously the Royal Observer Corps were outside, um, things like this weren't very, very good. They were completely open to the elements. Moisture was being built up, things like that there. So they decided then to introduce the number two. So you can see the difference. Okay, and we still have a charging handle, but they've added a weather cover. So. This unit was around for a couple of years. As you can see, introduced in 1957. Uh, this one was introduced in 1954. So a couple of changes were made. You can see here now instead of the rotary knob, we literally have a charge 
and discharge button, making it a lot easier to charge the dissimilar. The skip that was in, where you used to get a little jump when you were charging it, that had pretty much been eliminated with this model. And then they decided to introduce another model. So again, introduced a year later in 1958, we have the charging unit dissimilar number two, Mark II. So this is the Mark I, this is the Mark II, and it has a completely sealed weather cover, rubber weather cover that goes in. So they find it even though they had put a cover on it, moisture was still getting inside and ruining them. So they introduced this, this model that has the rubber weatherproof seal on the top so that the unit itself, all well okay, you'd get a little bit of surface rust maybe if you left it outside. Um, back in the day when obviously the Royal Observer Corps were still above ground, uh, it, at least the unit itself inside would stay reasonably dry. Not content with that, obviously you can see here the writing here, the Mark II, number two, Mark II. For some reason, <laughs> here's a number two, Mark II, but you can see there it says Mark II, the number two, whilst on this one it says number two, Mark II, with numerals for number two. So they're exactly the same unit. But this one was released in 1958, and this one was released in 1960. So between 58 and 1960, they'd dropped the uh, numerals and, but I mean, they're exactly the same unit. There are no hardware differences you can see inside. Just the labels are different. Um, again, they've, they've got the mirror inside still. So you have your mirror inside to, uh, to reflect up. But, you know, mechanically, these all work in exactly the same way. There's, there's no difference mechanically in how these all work. You all build up a static charge in them and then you release that static charge into the personal dissimilar itself and that charges it up. So in the 1970s um, and early 80s, uh, obviously all the dyno, hand crank dyno systems were starting to fail and they were replacing more units than you know was financially viable for them so they decided that the uh the government decided then to bring in a new style charger and what they brought out was this unit uh devised by eal um from in in the uk and uh this is the uh type n105a i'll bring it up so it does have the reflection and this is powered on just one a single D cell battery and the good thing about it is it also has a bulb inside so it used the uh, new generation of dissimilar this is a, a war uh, one so it's measured up to 200 ronkin and when you put you might be able to see the light and there you can, you can actually see the light inside the light shines through it with the bulb inside the unit and allows you then to see the display and as you charge it uh, you turn the little handle here, or the little knob here, and uh, that zeroes or you know puts a charge, if you wanted to use it for training, uh, onto the dissimilar itself. So that unit revolutionized things because no longer did you have to, you know, turn the handle like crazy for a couple of seconds. You uh, were able to, you know, just have it there whenever you wanted it to. And the uh, dissimilars came in these metal tubes. But this is the units that the Royal Observer Corps used. Uh, they did not use any other style of dissimilar charger. This is it. Um, there is a another version of this. Um, it just doesn't have this. This is a, a, a sort of a slightly newer version of the Mark One. It is still a number one, um, but you'll see them without this plate. Uh, that's the only difference. But this is it. No matter if you see another, um, I'm going to put up a picture now just on the screen of the other styles of dissimilar chargers. Sometimes you'll see credit to being used by the Royal Observer Corps. They weren't. This is it. This is the only ones you have. So you can pick these up sometimes for £10, £5. I'll see them sometimes going for 30 or 40 you know, shop around, there are, again, thousands of these. Uh, these are slightly harder to get, um, but you can get them. 
Uh, they do come up for sale, you know, a couple of times a year. Uh, but this is it. Um, I'm also going to overlay now a video uh, showing uh, one of these being charged. Um, works the same way in all the units, the way they're being charged. But uh, when you see the video of, of the charge, um, it's being charged with, uh, with this unit here. Uh, with the number two mark two uh, and uh, it's a very very straightforward process once you get the hang of it and uh, and get everything out right of orientation and especially if it's if it's one that's charged regularly it'll charge a lot easier uh, this one hadn't been charged in maybe 30 40 years and it took quite a while to actually build the static charge up in and again um, but now it, it seems to hold the charge quite well um, but yeah this is all the units and uh, again, any questions, feel free to ask away and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, I'll have, a, have to have a little think about what to do a video on next. Um, I'm in two minds. There's a couple of different bits of equipment I'm going to do it on, um, but I'll decide in the next week. But it'll either be um, on the uh, Fallout Warning Maroons, which are sort of flares. Uh, I'll either do a video on that um, or I will do a more in-depth video on the uh, all the post communications equipment like the radio and the tele talk and things like that there. So again, thanks for watching and uh, join me again next time. Cheers. Bye bye.